goodness, what day are we on? Day 18 of December Daily. And today I'm actually starting in Photoshop and I'm going to be using the Citrus Twist Kits um, Jingle All The Way stuff, digital stuff, printable stuff to start my layout um, in Photoshop just because I have an idea. I'm going to be pairing this with one of the um, foundation pages that I made with the Jingle All The Way stuff. It's going to be the 2x2 two two pages, uh, the 2x2 two two see-through um, shaker page that I made and um, a bunch of 2x2 two two photos. My mom uh, bought us some ornaments this year for our tree, so I'm going to print these out and put them in the 2x2 two two pockets. And this photo of Finn is what I'm going to be pairing it with on the opposite side on a 6x8 in the pocket layout. So I had an idea for how I wanted this to look, so I'm going to walk you through my process in Photoshop. So first thing I need to do is create a new um, canvas and it needs to be six by eight and a half to fit in the pocket all the way edge to edge. And then I want this photo to be a circle. And that is why I'm starting this in Photoshop because um, it's much easier to <laughs> deal with circles for me in Photoshop. So I'm going to use my elliptical marquee tool and I'm just going to draw a big circle by holding down shift to make sure that it is a circle and I'm going to center it on my photo. I think that looks good. We're edge to edge here and I'm just going to copy it by hitting command or control C and then I'm going to paste it on this page and I don't want it to be this large so I'm going to reduce the size probably to four and a half inches. I think that sounds good. Then I also want a mat underneath it. So I'm going to draw another circle with my marquee tool and I'm just going to create a new layer and then flood fill it with just whatever color. And then I'm gonna put it underneath. And then I'm going to come in here to my jingle all the way papers. And I'm gonna start adding papers. So this is going to be my background paper. And you can see that it is slightly too short, but this amount of resizing in Photoshop is not going to affect the quality. So I just make it a little bit bigger so that it fits the whole page, drop it down to the bottom layer, and then I want to mat it in green. So I'm just going to hold down the Option or Alt key in between these two layers to create a clipping mask. And then on the bottom, I want there to be a place for journaling. So I'm going to create a half circle on the bottom. And to, to, to do that, I'm going to repeat the process that I did before. I'm gonna make a circle that's slightly smaller than the circle with my photo. And I'm going to create a new layer and flood fill it. And then I'm going to I think I want it to be matted, so I'm going to mat it in this paper. And then again with the clipping mask by holding down option and clicking in between the two layers. Make sure everything is centered. There we go. And then I think my photo is slightly too large still, so I'm going to resize it down smaller. Oops, we don't want to do that. Just the photo and the mat. So let's make it make it four and a half inches because I want this to be slightly larger I think so I'm just gonna resize it a little bit bigger oh, that's too big it's bigger than my photo all right let's try something else let's again okay I'm just gonna duplicate this layer that I'm using as my mat for my photo and I'm going to drag this down to the bottom and then I'm gonna make it smaller All right, that's better. Then I'm going to drag this layer back up and clip it. And then I'm gonna duplicate this again so that I have a place for my journaling. There we go, that's better. And now to create my journaling box, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna command click the layer thumbnail of my journaling mat so that I get the marching ants around it. Then I'm going to go to select 
modify, contract, and I'll contract it by 20 pixels. And that will slightly move the marching ants in from the outside edge of the white mat. Then I'm going to go to my rectangular marquee tool because I also want the text box to end before the bottom of the page. So I'm going to hold down the option or alt key and just click and drag a tiny rectangle. And that will subtract by holding down the option key. It is going to subtract from my selection. So now you can see I have a text box or a marching ants half circle at the bottom of my page. And if I go to the paths palette, I can hit this button down here that says, I'm sorry, it's a little cut off. Uh, it's the fourth button from the left, the one in the center, and it says make worth work path from selection. Click on that and it makes a path. And then I can take my text tool and just click in the center of it and it will auto fill with some text. You can change my size or whatever I need to do. And that is my text box that I can now fill with my own journaling. And the last thing I wanna do before I print this and take it into real life is I want a little journaling card sentiment at the top. So I'm going to duplicate this layer again, this white layer, and I'm going to move it up to the top and I'm gonna make it smaller. <laughs> Again, I just want a half circle at the top. And then I'm going to go to the journaling cards for the Jingle All The Way collection. And I want it to have a sentiment at the top. And I like that this is joy. So I'm gonna drag that to the top and then I'm going to clip it to the box. And I want to make sure that the star is a little bit lower than the top of the page. So I'm just going to move that up. I need to make my circle smaller so that it's not so large. That's a little bit too small in comparison to the other circles. So we're going to make it a little larger. And I'm gonna make the journaling card just slightly larger too. That way it fits a little bit better. Let's do 110%. And then you can see at the bottom here, I have this little blue text box from the actual bottom of the journaling card. I don't want that, I want it to be white. So I'm gonna rasterize the layer and then I'm just gonna take my paintbrush tool on a smaller scale with hard edges and I'm just going to sample this white and use my paintbrush to do that. Okay, so this is the basis for my layout. I think I'm gonna tweak it a little bit more before I print it, but I really like this like circular orientation. I think this needs to be a little bit bigger again now. I'm gonna fill in my journaling and then I'm going to print and go to the real world. All right, so normally I would print and cut the layout in layers but you guys it is like day whatever 18 of december daily and i um we're, we're powering through and we're just gonna print <laughs> we're printing it whole so i did print out the photo separately because i wanted it to be on photo paper but you can see i also have all of the mini photos printed and i'm putting them in the pockets and i'm going to put the uh ornaments for my husband and I on the back because I am going to join this with a photo of my husband and I for day 19 which uh, is a different story so I, I just kind of want them to flow together so even though this is technically the back side of day 18 uh, it'll still work with day 19 whoof day 19 mentally for me because um you know it, it's our ornaments so i'm just hand cutting out this photo because again i'm not busting out my silhouette that is not what we're here for today today we are creating a fairly simple page and oh, man that blue in this album so i'm not i haven't used a lot of blue in this album even my pages and my collections that have a lot of blue uh, I haven't really been using this kind of blue and I just really love this page. It feels so peaceful and so gentle and so happy, which is perfect for that photo that I'm pairing it with. So I pulled out these uh, ornament die cuts from Citrus Twist because I felt like 
it was this page or no page. <laughs> it's kind of how I was feeling. And I will admit, I'm not a huge fan of the pine cones, but they really do work on this page. And so I was glad that I could incorporate them into the album and not just, you know, toss them down the line or cycle them into my stash. I used the gold foiled 18 from the candy coated Christmas December days stamps from last year since I have all of those printed and it was circular and so I thought it would add to the circular composition of the page and so I'm just I'm kind of seeing how I can incorporate these you know very vertical well one is very vertical and one is very horizontal ornaments into this page that is primarily circles and I thought I could add these uh, sticker bows from the crepe paper sticker sheet that have been sitting on the top of my desk forever since I pulled them off a while ago and I was like oh these are just sitting here I'm going to use them for the top of these ornaments so I am just trying to create some balance here without overwhelming the composition of the page you know me like the, the circles could have been it it could have been a look like a fully completed and perfect um, layout but you know me I have to have all of the layers and all of the clustering so I just wanted to add a little bit more I added the bow to the top of this cardinal and it looks so silly I just I didn't know what to do with it yet so I just kind of left it there and thankfully I find another pine cone ornament in my die cuts here in a second and I um, add it to the page and I can move the bow over to the other pine cone rather than giving that bird a bow, especially since only male cardinals are red. So uh, having a hair bow doesn't really make much sense on a male bird or a bird in general. So it just looks so silly to me. I wanted to add in a few of these hearts because this photo is just so lovey-dovey and I'm going to pop them all up on um, foam so that they just have a little lift off of the page. This is going in a page protector so I don't want too much um, height on this page but I did like the way that they lifted just slightly. I'm going to add my kids initials. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that this is a completely unnecessary step. Like we would know down the line whose ornament is whose. That one is obviously a wren for wren. And Joe is my mushroom child. And Finn is my creepy kid. So that creepy um, gingerbread man down there. I mean, there's no way that we would not know whose is whose. But I just felt like it needed a little extra oomph on each of these photos so that they weren't just sitting in there naked. <laughs> so I am just adding their initial and a little heart to each one and that will help to just uh, it also kind of brings the whole confetti vibe from the pockets to the pictures as well because we have all of the little bits and pieces in those center pockets so it kind of just helps bring that whole vibe to the whole page at least that was my justification for adding things to the photos. <laughs> the last little one is going to be that Deck the Halls card. And then I'm going to flip it over and figure out what I want to do on the other side because I don't want to add uh, too much to this side because I'm not quite sure what the next page is going to look like other than I know what the story is and I know what the photo is going to be. So I don't want to add like lots of color or very specific things to this side of the page that are going to not make sense with the next page. So I decided to use this fairly neutral um, paper. I had these paper scraps and I cut them down into two by two squares and I'm just going to add this love and joy which will the sentiment will match both sides of the page. Um, and this little brown Christmas tree, craft paper Christmas tree. I'm going to adhere this whole thing so that uh, the white border on the deck or around the outside edges of the deck of the halls is even since it's not, it's a little bit smaller than the two by two. And I see that I put that in there crooked. I haven't noticed yet in, real, in the real life video, but I will. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this one so that they are nice and back to back. I did realize Later on, after I noticed that this was crooked, I didn't realize that I didn't want, like, the uh, sentiments on the back to be where they were. So I do rearrange it, which rearranges the photos on the other side, too. Not a big deal. I always like to make my kids, like, in order. Like, whenever I'm scrapbooking about them or whatever, I like it to say WJF because that's, like, their order birth order but this this gets it out of order so my OCD is a little bit like what but that's okay no big deal it's not a big deal so the other side I decided to just put a little journal bit so that it um, I could write some notes if I wanted to 
I found that other pine cone and I put the bow at the top of that pine cone instead, much better. And then we're getting close to done here. I don't really want to add too much more to this layout. I don't really want to ruin the aesthetic of uh, those circles. So I think we're good framing it in the way that it is. Maybe add another heart just to, just for balance. And yeah, so that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you. If you don't already, you can follow me over on Instagram. I'm at Tracy M. Reed. I'd love to see you over there as well. There's a link in the description box below to the uh, blog post for this video if you're interested in the credits and the still images. And I will see you next time. All right. Thank you.